Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Mr. Outlaw. Today we're going to review the new Billow 2 RTA from e Siggity and ePro. So let's get into it. So a lot of us had the version one of the Billow and it was a really good RTA, but there were definitely some issues with it. If you remember, the drip tip would get extremely hot. There was no insulator on there. So when you were vaping at higher wattages, you would almost burn your lips. Uh, it was a pain in the neck to fill. You had to deal with that screw port. And then when you would try to use your syringe needles, uh, they wouldn't fit all the way down. You couldn't use plastic droppers. You couldn't use glass droppers. Uh, it was just a pain in the neck and very messy to fill. Then your adjustable airflow, you had to deal with the screws and take the whole device off. When you wanted to re-wick it or rebuild it, you had to empty the entire tank. Uh, there were just a lot of different little issues with it that made it a device that I personally never wanted to use. While e and the ePro listened to the community, they listened to the reviewers, they went back to the drawing board, and now they're bringing us the Billow 2. Now this is available from eSiggity.com. I'll leave a link down in the description. It is uh, $34.99. Uh, make sure you look online for some different discount coupons. They always have one out there that you can uh, use for devices with them. And I'm just loving it. I mean, the flavor is incredible. I mean, it's rivaling a lot of my RDAs. The vapor production, it's phenomenal. I mean, I currently have this on my SX Mini. It's on uh, 27 joules. Uh, you won't, can't see that probably. Uh, 27 joules, 420 degrees in the powerful setting. And take a look at the vapor production on this. I mean, look at that vapor. That is a lot of vapor for a lower setting. Now, the reason I decided to go ahead and try this device is because I pretty much run all of my devices on a temperature control or temperature limiting uh, dev uh, unit. I, it's pretty much the only thing I like to use now. The problem is I couldn't find an RTA that really would work well with that, where you had enough room to build a dual coil or build a nice single coil. And uh, my KFUN V4, it's probably my favorite one. The problem was that spring was messing with the resistances. Sometimes I would get a really good vape. Sometimes I would get a crappy one because the resistance got messed up. Well, I'm not getting that issue with the Billow 2. This thing is just phenomenal, and it's working really, really well with my SX Mini and my RDNAs. So let's go ahead and take this down to up close and personal. We'll take apart the device. I'll show you all the different areas. I'll build one. Then we'll come back. We'll vape it. We'll go over all the pros and cons and let you know whether or not I think you should go ahead and pick one of these up. Okay, so this is the box it comes in. It does come in a sealed plastic pouch. I took that off already. Uh, it says ePro and eSiggity. Billow version 2, a picture of the device. On the one side, it says eSiggity and ePro. The other side, it has the website addresses for both companies. And then on the back, it says Billow version 2 with a little warning. And a certificate of authenticity sticker. So you can go ahead and scan this QR code and check it out. Uh, and then we open it up. This box just slides right off. We have a little flip top box here. Here we have a user's manual. Uh, it tells you all the different features of the device, how to build it, how to um, how to fill it up, everything like that. Good stuff on that. Now this is a U unit. I haven't used this one. Um, we do have a little Phillips head screwdriver here, a little extra bag of O-rings, a decent amount of extra O-rings, and two screws in there. And then we have our actual RTA. Now again, I haven't used this one. Now the first one that I opened up, um, I had a hard time taking it apart. So if you do have that issue, I found the easiest way to do it is just remove uh, the 510 pin and I was able to take it apart very easily. So just taking a look at it. Now when I got this, it does come very clean. And again, I haven't even taken this one out of the box yet. And you can see if I can get this to focus in. Um, it comes very clean. Uh, there is really no machine oil to speak of at all on it. Okay, so down on the bottom, we have uh, eSiggity and ePro. Um, we have our serial number down there, a copper 510 pin. We have a removable drip tip up here on the top. If I can get it out. And you can see they did put a Delren insulator on here. Uh, now, I have been able to put all of my standard drip tips in there. So you can put any drip tip you want in there. This is a wide bore drip tip. Okay, so taking a little bit closer look at the unit, you can see here, it is a 22 millimeter device. However, they've bowed out the glass a little bit. So the glass actually is 23 millimeters. So you have 22 millimeters on the bottom, 
23 millimeters on the glass and then it goes back up to 22 millimeters on the very top and they did that so they can maintain the five millimeter juice uh, five milliliter juice capacity uh, now down here we have our adjustable airflow and you can see you just simply turn it and it does have a stop so you can't spin it all the way around and you can go from either wide open to just barely open and I, I happen to like it like this. I like it wide open. I have found that if I have it like halfway, um, I get like a whistling sound that I'm not really fond of. I also feel this uh, juice ring, could, this airflow ring could be a little bit tighter. It kind of moves a little bit too easy sometimes. Now taking it apart, we're simply gonna grab the base. And again, if you get yours and it's hard to take apart, remove the 510 pin and it helps it out. Or you can put it in the freezer. That will help it as well. Just simply grab on the base and unscrew it and you want to make sure you kind of grab onto this bottom ring so that you're not unscrewing it from your uh, unscrewing your glass tank you're going to take off your base right here and we have our build deck there's an extra little piece right here this comes off so you can get into your build deck you have two massive air flows right here they have four decent sized uh, juice uh, flow holes and they've also now put in a little uh, slot up on the top to rest your wicks in to help uh, wicking it a little bit easier we have a four post hole design uh, screws on the top instead of uh, hex nuts so we have four screws very very clean and you have your o-ring down on the bottom for the glass tank now you can take off this uh, juice can this airflow ring it's a bit of a pain but just kind of like grab your fingers in there and grab it and it will slide off we'll take that off Just kind of slides up. It's got to slide up past that O-ring. So you can take this off to clean it. You can see there's our airflow ring. Again, two slots. And you can take a look at here. And it has like a little set screw right here. And if you look inside of your airflow ring, you'll see like a little groove. So when you put it back together, you're going to simply just take that groove, line it up with that set screw, and push it back on. Moving on to the tank itself, when you want to rebuild or rewick this, you simply unscrew it. You leave your tank intact. You have your chimney section right here. That's going to unscrew. There's an O-ring up on top. There's an O-ring down on the bottom. These four holes are going to be where you're going to fill it and allows the juice to get down into your tank itself. And you have a piece of glass right here. Just pops right off. And this glass, it's thick, but not super thick. It is uh, 1.65 millimeters. Okay. And then you have an O-ring up here on the top. So the glass just kind of sits in on the O-ring for a good seal. And then you just screw this back on like this. So now when you want to filling it, you can just simply take this off, put this off to the side, turn it upside down, stand it up like this and you can go ahead and rebuild or rewick it. Now to fill it, we're going to actually use these four slots here. You don't want to obviously get it down in the middle airflow tool. So all you're going to do is kind of turn it on its side and fill it up and we'll show you that after we build it. Now I have found, uh, though this is a much better design than the old ones, I can't fit my dropper bottles in there. So I have to kind of turn it on side and carefully drop the juice in there. And we'll show you that a little bit more after we build the deck. So let's go ahead and build this. Uh, I'll use some standard 26 gauge and I'll also show you how I did my nickel build. Okay, so I opted not to build these coils on camera because of uh, time's sake and also because it's a little bit more difficult to build them on camera. Uh, but these are two 26 gauge eight wrap on a 2.5 millimeter post. You can see they do have to be centered uh, right over your airflow channel. Um, I have them about two millimeters off of the airflow channel and about a millimeter, a millimeter and a half off of the center battery uh, post. And you can see we'll go ahead and we'll fire them right up. And they're looking pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and wick these. Now wicking, you don't need a lot of wick. Just going to take a small piece of, of cotton, twist the end, and pull it through. Do the same thing over on the other side. So 
You know, I do like it a little bit snugger. And then we're just going to go ahead and trim it. Now when you do this, you're going to have to wet your wicks in order to press them down. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll work on one side and then the other. And then I can trim it up a little bit more. And I'm just going to trim off a lot of the excess so that it can just kind of sit in there. Now when I do this, I want to make sure that my airflow slot is not have the wick sitting in it, otherwise you're going to have some leaking issues. So you just want your wick sitting on the deck and make sure it's coming down into that little groove that they've provided for us now. So that's one there. And we'll do the other side. Same thing, kind of just trim it up a little bit. And I find it a little bit easier to get it the way I want when the wick is actually wet. And trim that up a little bit more. You can see you just do not need a lot of wick with these. When you are doing your wicking, I would definitely take your time. It's probably going to be the most tedious part to make sure it's in there and not on your threads. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues when you try to uh, put on your top cap. So there we go. Go ahead and fire that up. And once you have it wicked, you can just simply take your cap on here, slide it on. And gently screw it in. Now we can go ahead and wick it up. Now when we wick when we fill this up, again we're going to take our take it, turn it upside down, simply take your bottle, and you're gonna drop it right into that hole. Now this dropper bottle particularly does it doesn't fit all the way in the holes, but it makes a little bit neater. But if you do take a dropper bottle, for example, like this one here, you're going to see that you really can't, you can't fit this down inside of that hole. So you're going to have to hold it at an angle and just drop it in like that. So we're going to fill this up with some good life vapor, deadly sin, and just fill it up. Just turn it on its side. And I won't fill it up all the way. I'll be here forever. We're gonna. This will hold five millimeters. That should be good enough. Then we'll simply take it, turn it upside down, put it on like that, tighten it, and we're good to go. So let's head back up from FaceTime. We'll vape it, and then we'll talk about the pros and cons. So before we head up to FaceTime, I did want to just show you a nickel build on here. Uh, this is the one I'm currently using. I didn't want to take it apart. But this is uh, eight wraps of 30 gauge NI200 on a three millimeter rod. I trapped the leads underneath the screw heads, um, which I am able to do. The screw heads are very small. You're not going to be able to trap anything larger than maybe 28 gauge, and that'll take a little bit of effort. Uh, but you can fit nickel coils on here. This comes in at a uh, 0.12 ohm coil, and it vapes very, very well with nickel build. So uh, let's head up to FaceTime, and we'll vape the uh, Canthal coil. Okay, so now that we've built it, let's go ahead and vape it. I have this on the SX Mini. It's at 18 watts. It's a 0.4 ohm coil. Uh, the airflow is wide open. A lot of flavor, a lot of vapor, really enjoying it, and that's at a low wattage. Let's go ahead and bump that up a little bit. We'll go up to uh, 21 watts. Really, really enjoying it, really enjoying it. We'll go up again. We'll Let's go up to uh, 36 watts, just trying to see if it can handle it. And again, I'm not taking long vapes, and, and this is the lower waters than a lot of you may even be using. Much warmer vape, but it's it's keeping up. The wicking is keeping up, and it's really good. 
We'll go up one more time. We're going to go all the way up to 60 watts. Now, I really can't handle 60 watts. It's going to be a very short vape, but let's see how it wicks out with that. Quick one second hit, a lot of vapor, but you know, there's no wicking issues. It's keeping up with the wicking. I'll take one more longer one. I promise I can't cough because, you know, I, I'll promise I won't cough because I really don't like 60 watt vapes. And it's keeping up with it. And again, that's just a quick one or two second vape. It keeps up with it. So let's get into the pros and cons of this device. We'll start off with the cons. Uh, my first con is going to be, I really wish there was a single coil mode. I, I understand that this is a dual coil RTA, but I like single coils, especially when I'm building a nickel. So I wish there was a way to do single coil. Now, e Siggity told me you can build single coils, which I know, but there's no way to close off that second airflow channel. So I would like to see maybe just a third slot on that ring where you can take it off and put it onto a single coil mode. I don't know, maybe that's something they can do on version three. Um, my next con is going to be this airflow ring. Uh, it moves a little bit too easy. You can see here, I can actually open and close it with one finger. And I don't like that. I, I would really prefer to make it a little bit more restrictive. One of mine is a little bit more restrictive than the other. And I don't know if that has anything to do with the set screw or anything like that. But it just turns a little bit too easy. Now, I have again contacted e about that issue. And they said they're aware of it and they're making a solution on it. So I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to come out in the next run of them. Or if it's going to be something on the version 3. Uh, my next con will definitely be uh, the juice, uh, adding the juice into it, refilling it. It's a significant improvement from the version one. It's definitely not as messy, but as I showed you when I was filling it, my glass dropper bottles don't fit in there. I'd like to see those holes maybe just a little bit wider so I can put the glass dropper bottle in there and not having to worry about any of the juice flowing down into the air tube. So again, not a giant con, but enough that I'd like to see a little bit of an improvement. Uh, my next con, probably my last one, a subjective con. I'm not a huge fan of wide bore drip tips. I know that that is like kind of what everybody wants, but us old school vapors, we like the smaller drip tips. So maybe either give me a smaller uh, drip tip as well, or, you know, I know we can add in our own drip tips, but now you're back to the issue if you have a stainless steel one where you don't have the Delrin insulator. So maybe give us like, a, you know, two drip tips. Give us the wide bore one and then a standard drip tip. But again, that's a subjective con. And that's pretty much the, all the cons I have. The only other one I might have is when I got it, one of my units was very, very difficult to take apart to the point where I almost grabbed a pair of pliers to take it apart. So if you have that issue, again, try what I did. Take out that 510 pin. It did seem to loosen it up. Or you can stick it in the freezer for a couple minutes. That might loosen it up as well. So let's get into the pros. Uh, I have a lot of pros. Pretty much everything about this device is a pro. Uh, first of all, you know, they really listened to the community and the reviewers and they made all of the improvements that people suggested. You know, I'd love to see a top fill method at some point, but the way that they've designed it so that at least you don't have to deal with that silly little screw port anymore and it's not as messy as it was is definitely a pro. I know it was a con, but it's also a pro. Uh, my next pro is going to be overall, the build quality is incredible. I've had no issues with any of my leads snapping off with the screws, they're nice and you know smooth across the bottom. They're not sharp. Uh, the vapor production is incredible. The flavor, it's rivaling a lot of my RDAs. It really is, is a good flavor. And, and the temperature is nice and warm. I mean, you get everything with it. So much so that I found I've had to lower down the wattage from what I'm used to because I'm just getting more than I'm used to when I'm using it. It's definitely putting my KFUN V4s on the shelf. Um, and along with that, you know, I like the fact that it's easy to build nickel coils on here. Again, I love using nickel now. I really have pretty much moved only solely to uh, temperature control and temperature limiting devices. So it's been hard to find an RTA that I can use and build those coils. So you can do nice cantal coils, but the deck is, it's not, it's not huge, it's, but it's not so small that I can't build a dual nickel coil on there. And even when I use my nickel coil, I mean, this is a nickel coil on here, uh, the dual one that I showed you earlier, it's at 18.8 .8 watts. And I get really good vapor and flavor with it. So I like the fact that this is an RTA that I can use with nickel coil builds. Go ahead and put that down. Um, 
Next Comp Pro is definitely going to be, it came very clean. No scratches on it, uh, built well, and really no machine oil to speak of. I mean, I rinsed it off one time and I was good to go. So definitely a big pro there. And overall, this is a significant improvement off of the version one. The version one was a good device, but it had some issues. Uh, this one, again, it's just a significant improvement. I mean, I've had no leaking issues. I actually laid it on its side with a full tank for about 10 hours and nothing leaked out. So definitely a big pro there. So that is my video for today, guys. Hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully it helps you make a little bit more informed decision if you want to go ahead and pick one of these up. I highly suggest it. If you're looking for a rebuildable tank, this is a great device, especially at the price point of $34.99. Now again, remember, if you want me to review any type of a clone device, like an RTA, an RBA, a tank, anything other than mods, send me a tweet at, at Vapor Outlaw, and I'll be happy to try to pick one of those up and do a review for you. So that's my video for today, guys. Do me a favor, hit the like button down on the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, happy vaping.